and welcome. Thank you so much for coming to help us celebrate this historic occasion and the very first Better Together California Teachers Summit. Um, it is just, it has been a wonderful day. I think most of you were at the site here at Cal State Fullerton and you saw how excited the teachers were um, to, to share in this day of learning. Um, I just want to very briefly recognize and thank the people who, not by name, but just the groups of people who have really made this possible. I want to thank our partners um, at the California State University System uh, Chancellor's Office. They have really supported us throughout this effort, especially Dr. Joan Bissell, but really, and Lori Widener also who helped with communications. That whole Chancellor's Office staff did a fabulous job, so thank you for your help. Um, I want to th <laughs> help is putting it too mildly. Thank you for helping us to make this happen. I want to thank everyone at Cal State Fullerton, our president, Mildred Garcia, um, our CIO, Amir Dabirian, uh, Greg Sachs from Advancement, and as well as all of our staff who are so wonderful. And special shout out of thanks, I can't do it enough, to our two faculty leads, Mark Ellis and Hallie Yopslowick. <laughs> I said it earlier, but you weren't all in the room then. They really were thought leaders who helped to really shape this event statewide. I want to thank all of our teachers who came and shared with us our um, Ed Talk speakers. And I think I see at least two of them. Are you here? Put, put your hands up. Thank you. Wow. We are so proud of you and so grateful, as well as all of our um, other teacher leaders who came to serve as facilitators at the Ed Camp sessions. Let's just give them a thanks. And finally, I want to thank um, our new Dean of the College of the Arts, Dale Merrill, for allowing us to use, enabling us to use this beautiful facility. Where are you, Dale? All right. So today was a historic occasion. We had, before we started, we had 15,000 teachers registered um, across the state to attend at 33 locations. I'm really proud to say that 10,000 of those teachers were registered for 20 California State University sites. And I think with that, I don't need to say any more. I'm going to turn it over to our marvelous president, Dr. Mildred Garcia. Buenas tardes and good afternoon. First of all, I want to thank Dean Carolero and the whole College of Education for everything they've done today. It's been an amazing day, and I am proud that I have this college at Cal State Fullerton. And I will say it's the best college of education in the system. You know, it's an, you know, you don't give a president a mic without giving me some time to brag about our College of Education. You know, it's an honor for Cal State Fullerton and our College of Education to partner in this event to support the work of the amazing California teachers. But we at Cal State Fullerton are more than a proud and grateful partner. We believe we're the right partner. Our College of Education, as I said earlier, is led by a dynamic dean and Dean Claire Cavallaro, statewide and national leader in many areas. Our teacher prep program credentials is the largest number of teachers in Orange County and the second largest number in California. We're going to be number one real soon because of Dean Cavallaro. Our programs achieve a 75% graduation rate with 79% of doctoral students earning a doctorate compared to the national rate of 43%. Nearly 70% of our students who earned that doctorate of education over the past three years are from ethnically diverse backgrounds. So I am very, very proud of that. I could go on and on, but the bottom line is this. Much of our success hinges upon the collaborative efforts of all of you in this room. We're honored to work with you, to go into those collaborative partnerships that are not easy. I've been involved in partnerships. 
but you have had that transformative power that we saw today with all the teachers. And you will work and make sure that every student, regardless of race or class or background, will reach their full potential. So I thank you for all you do. And I am really proud. I also want to welcome Leland Melvin for doing all he did for us today. And to welcome him to Cal State Fullerton, I'm sure this is probably his first visit. Won't be the last. But it is, we will make you a proud Titan because our motto is Titans reach higher and everyone today is an honorary Titan. Thank you. Thank you, President Garcia. It's now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Joan Bissell, statewide California State University um, Director of Teacher Education and Public School Programs. On behalf of the California State University Chancellor's Office, I also want to thank all of you. Um, we want especially to thank Dr. Cavallaro and to thank um, President Garcia for the extraordinary things that they did today, but they always do. Um, today was an extraordinary day. It began with a very bold vision. What was remarkable was that that vision was accomplished. And so it's only fitting that we have as a guest this afternoon um, someone who is as bold as they come. Um, we are just extraordinarily fortunate to have with us Leland Melvin. Um, most of you know a bit about him, a um, bit about his football career, a um, bit about his being on two Atlanta space shuttle missions, um, fixing the International Space Station, um, let's see, eating yummy gumballs in space. Um, there's probably a number of things that you don't know about him. Um, it's so it being kind of what matters to um, Leland is so very broad for those things that we as educators think about. Um, it's STEAM. Um, it includes the arts. And so we hear about all of his um, leadership in STEM. Um, we in the California State University were great beneficiaries as were middle school students around California when um, he led the NASA Summer of Innovation for middle schoolers. He's a photographer. Um, he's a musician. Um, maybe he'll tell us a little bit about what I understand was the first song that went to another planet. Um, he's an absolutely extraordinary human being, um, and probably most of all, just a really nice guy. <laughs> Mel Leland Melvin. Wow, thank you, Dr. Bissell. I'm so excited to be here. And I think one of the biggest reasons I'm so excited is because when you come to certain places, you feel an energy, electricity, you feel like you're already part of the family. And the welcome that you guys gave me when I walked in here, it just felt like I was at home. So thank you very much for that warm welcome. I think about, you know, you, you heard about kind of my trajectory earlier today, but some of the things that maybe I didn't talk about in my life were truly how everyone in my community, I mean, truly had a hand. And not just, you know, to, to get me right, but it was this expectation that you're gonna do the best that you can do. It was from the, the postman who came to my house to give mail, Leland, how you doing today? What were your grades like? What do you, I mean, it was this, this whole community was really engaged and I think, what you started today is what every community should do all the time. Because when I walked into the um, Pasadena Convention Center, the educators were buzzing. I mean, it was like I was in a beehive. And I'm like, what was going on here? You know, killer bees here or something? And, but it was, it was electric. And if that was happening at all of these different you know, locations around the state, then you have started something that's going to be on fire. And I think, like as Lauren, I mean, uh, Joan said, the next steps are Monday to decide how we keep this thing going. But it's going to be incredible. My a little bit more about my background. When, when I grew up in Lynchburg, there was another um, was another person, my my sixth grade teacher, who I saw at my mother's retirement home 
about three weeks ago. And I saw her, we hugged, we cried, you know, she's, she's been such a supporter. And she told me, and she had never told me this before, she said, Leland, she said, I knew you were gonna go to space when you were in sixth grade. And I said, well, how did you know that? Because I didn't know that. And, you know, I didn't even know that when I was working for NASA, she said. <laughs> but she said, it was something about the way that you looked up into the sky, even during the day, not just the night sky, but in the day looking up and, and just, you know, pointing out, you know, if the moon was up and then not trying to look into the sun, but close to the sun. And she said, it was just something in your spirit that led me to think that you were gonna do this. And so not just what we teach the kids, not just the books and the math and the hands-on experiential, it's getting into the heart of the child to let them know that you care about them. And that's what the community did for me. They let me know that I cared, I mattered. And you know, as an African-American male, a lot of these kids are getting disenfranchised, some of our girls, you know, when, you, when I talked about, you know, it used to be the manned space program, there's still people today that use the wrong language that don't include our kids. And the perception that when you walk in the, kid with your, when, in the school with your pants down low and you got this and that, that could be the brightest kid in the bunch. And we sometimes, you know, we don't include them in the discussion because they look a certain way. And so I've, I've been privy to that kind of behavior. I didn't have my pants hanging down low, but I, I walked in with, you know, with, you know, it wasn't a hoodie, it was whatever it was, and someone assumed that I wasn't one that could achieve great things. So I really applaud you for your numbers and diversity in the PhDs, because I think 43%, what was so, Okay, so. See, the solar radiation affects the, the memory sometimes, you know. <laughs> 79% in Cal State Fullerton, and that is, that is so impressive, and uh, we have to keep doing that to make sure that everyone's included. Um, Summer of Innovation, Joan, you mentioned that. That was a program that was to help the President Educate to Innovate initiative back in 2010. And it was our charge at NASA headquarters to try to get out and inspire those middle school students. And we partnered with the Department of Education, with other people. That hands-on experiential brain activating moment has allowed so many kids to see that they can be or do anything they put their minds to. I remember I was speaking at a NASA Goddard Space Flight Center when I first became an astronaut back in 1998. And I hadn't flown in space. And I was giving this talk as an unflown astronaut. And I think one of the kids in the, in, the, in the room, they said, so don't astronauts fly in space? I said, yeah. Well, you haven't flown in space, so are you really an astronaut? I'm like, well, I'm an unflown astronaut, you know. But I was, I was giving this talk, and I was, I was showing some slides of the real astronauts that were actually in space. And this group of students walked in late. African-American students who walked in late, and I guess they had been up at night partying or some whatever they were doing, they all fell asleep on me. And I said, hmm, I must not be that good a public speaker. And one young lady, she woke up and she looked at the slide, and I had a picture of Dr. Bernard Harris, who was the first African-American astronaut, he was a medical doctor, but the first African-American to do a spacewalk. And it was out doing a spacewalk, and she saw his picture, she heard his name, and then she was, you know, fell back asleep. <laughs> and I said, man, I really must be a bad public speaker. But five years later, I was, I think I was downtown LA at an event signing pictures for, for students. And this young lady walked up to me and she said, Mr. Melvin, I fell asleep on you five years ago when you were giving a talk, but I woke up and saw Dr. Harris and then I fell back asleep. <laughs> she said that that one moment she was so inspired that she was gonna go to medical school and then become an astronaut. So I have one data point of longitudinal tracking, <laughs> right? She told me, it came from the horse's mouth, that it was that moment that sealed the deal for her. How many more kids are out there that have had those experiences 
but don't have that follow-up piece to find out where they are or that other activation to get them going. We've got to keep, we got to hit them hard, hit them really hard to keep that going. And this young lady could be somewhere in California saving lives as a surgeon. I wish I kept up with her. I might send out something to the newspapers to say, I'm trying to find the girl back in the day who fell asleep on me. <laughs> but that's what we need to do. We need to keep on inspiring through programs like this. And the other thing that I said earlier today was, you cannot inspire someone unless you're inspired. So the professional development for our educators is paramount to ensuring that our kids get inspired. And NASA's tried to do a lot of things with professional development. I'm gonna talk to Dr. Bissell about some things I'm gonna do for the future for professional development with maybe reconstituting something called a microgravity university where teachers are actually flying in a zero-G airplane with their students' experiments. So we'll be discussing some of those things. But I really appreciate the warm welcome. I'm so glad I could be part of this movement that's going to be continued on and on. And it's going to be like an infectious, well, let's not go negative with infections. It's going to be <laughs> like a rocket ship getting fueled continuously, taking off and exciting the minds of the next generation of educators and explorers. Thank you very much and Godspeed. I said he is an honorary titan. I need to get that. So. The Titan Shield. Let's see. I get this on without. No blood. Know, no blood, no okay. blood. Isn't he amazing? Thank you. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Honorary Titan. Thank you. Go Titans. Go Titans. Please continue the conversation. Enjoy the reception. And of course, thank Leland for an amazing heartfelt, heartfelt talk. Thank you. Thank you.